goblin killed. I had nothing to do with it. Don't, don't let him take me again. I beg you. Willem Dafoe is a famous American actor, a four-time Oscar nominee. He has striking appearance, charisma, and incredible talent, so he easily turns into any character, whether it's God, a supervillain, a great artist, or a miserable bandit. In this video, we will introduce you to this multifaceted artist. Willem Dafoe – How Green Goblin from Spider-Man Lived Now's the time for gab and chatter. Let's be enjoying it. Willem James Defoe was born on July 22, 1955, in the small town of Appleton, Wisconsin, in a large family. The future actor became the seventh of eight children of surgeon William and nurse Muriel. The boy's parents worked a lot, so he was raised mostly by his older sisters. The future actor was named after his father, but he really disliked being called Billy, so in high school he changed his name to Willem and used it in his later career. Defoe has a rich ancestry. He is of English, Irish, Scottish, French, and German descent. The boy was very different from his brothers and sisters in his personality. While the other children were reserved, he was constantly joking and making people laugh. Willem was the only one in the family who devoted his life to art, while the rest became lawyers or doctors. By the way, in an interview, Defoe said that as a child he learned a lot of interesting things from his sisters about sexuality and procreation, but when he decided to share this information with classmates, they beat him, considering what he said disgusting. Later, he was expelled from high school for making a film featuring adult materials. By the way, at that time, Willem had a huge crush on actress Raquel Welch. In his youth, Defoe left his hometown for Milwaukee, where he enrolled in drama courses at the University of Wisconsin. However, after studying there for 18 months, he dropped out. Jumping ahead, it's worth mentioning that in 2022, he was awarded an honorary doctorate in art history at the university. Nevertheless, Willem dropped out in order to join the experimental theater company Theater X, becoming essentially a traveling actor. With the theater company, the young man toured throughout America and Europe, but four years later returned to the United States, settling in New York. There, the actor got a job at the Performance Group Theater, although at first only as a carpenter, and over time he was allowed to go on stage with other actors. In this theater, Defoe met director Elizabeth Lecomte. The young people started dating, and the girl had to break up with her boyfriend, who also worked at the theater. But the funny thing is that all three of them eventually had to live in the same apartment, which they arbitrarily divided into two parts. Over time, disagreements arose in the theater between the director Richard Schechner and other participants, and as a result, Schechner left the group, and the remaining members, including Defoe and his beloved, renamed themselves the Wooster Group. As part of this company, Willem performed for more than 25 years. He was also its co-founder. At the same time, the actor was building his film career. In 1980, he starred in the movie Heaven's Gate, but most of the scenes with his participation were cut from it during editing, and his name wasn't mentioned in the credits. This was done at the request of director Michael Cimino, who was dissatisfied with the work of the aspiring actor. The fact is that eager to get the role, Defoe lied to him about knowing Dutch, and during the filming, the lie was exposed. In addition, one day Willem laughed at the wrong time on the set, which angered the director even more. Nevertheless, recalling this experience later, the actor admitted that he did not regret what had happened because in the end the film turned out to be a failure. Defoe's real debut is considered to be the main role in the drama The Loveless, where he played the leader of a biker gang. Got any cigarettes? Yeah. But I'd feel like I was promoting child abuse. The movie appeared on screens in 1981 and was a remake of the 1953 film The Wild One, starring Marlon Brando in a similar role. The following year, Willem and Elizabeth had a son, Jack. By that time, the lovers had not legalized their relationship. According to Defoe, he repeatedly proposed to the girl, but she treasured her freedom very much, so she refused him, agreeing only to a civil marriage. After that, the man starred in the films The Hunger, New York Nights, Streets of Fire, Roadhouse 66, and To Live and Die in L.A. He'll cave in on me. What can you give him? Everything. Even then, the directors offered the actor mainly the roles of antagonists, noting his perfectly villainous face. 
For example, in To Live and Die in LA, he played an immoral counterfeiter. By the way, the actors actually printed counterfeit money in the frame, and in order to teach them this, they hired a criminal previously convicted of this activity. By the way, every time a helicopter flew over their building, it seemed to Willem that it was the police and they would all get busted. In 1986, Defoe appeared in an episode of the TV series The Hitchhiker and also starred in the military drama Platoon, playing compassionate Sergeant Elias. We're gonna lose this war. You really think so? Us? We've been kicking other people's asses for so long, I figure it's time we got ours kicked. To get into characters properly, the actors train for two weeks under the guidance of a Marine captain, experiencing military life. And during the filming, Willem contracted yellow fever, which made him delirious for 24 hours. Despite the misfortunes, the film was a resounding success. It was recognized as the best film of the year and made the actor truly famous. For his role, Defoe received an Oscar nomination, which was a real surprise for him because he learned about it from his child's babysitter. By the way, the scene of his character's death has become a cult and one of the most tragic in modern cinema. In 1987, the man took part in the voiceover of the documentary Dear America, Letters Home from Vietnam, and the following year he starred in the films Off Limits, Mississippi Burning, and The Last Temptation of Christ, playing Jesus himself. All foreign coins have to be exchanged for shekels. That is the law. I'm throwing away the law. I have a new law and a new hope. The film aroused great public interest, but at the same time attracted criticism from religious organizations that considered it blasphemous. Willem himself later admitted that the work on this film was the most grueling of his career. In 1989, Defoe starred in the films Triumph of the Spirit and Born on the Fourth of July, in which he played a paraplegic veteran of the Vietnam War. At the same time, he was considered for the role of the supervillain Joker in the movie Batman. The screenwriter wrote this character specifically for Willem, however, something didn't work out, and the role of the Joker was given to Jack Nicholson. In the early 1990s, the actor's filmography was replenished with the musical Cry Baby, the action movie Flight of the Intruder, and the comedy thriller Wild at Heart for the role in which he had to wear false teeth, a thin mustache, and slick back hairstyle. In 1992, Defoe starred in the films White Sands and Light Sleeper, in which he played a drug dealer. To prepare for this role, Willem went to several real drug deals. In the same period, the actor starred in the erotic thriller Body of Evidence as a lawyer of Black Widow, played by Madonna, who was at the peak of her fame. By the way, it was the singer who insisted that Willem should be her co-star. It's not a crime to be a beautiful woman. It's not a crime to fall in love with an older man. This case should have never come to trial, but since it has... In preparation for filming, he attended a court session but failed to remain anonymous and the hearing had to be suspended. Some people in the courtroom, including the judge and several jurors, wanted to talk to the celebrity. The film failed at the box office and received negative reviews from critics. Willem himself was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Anti Award. At the same time, the scene where Madonna's character pours hot wax on the actor's body became a cult. Then Defoe's filmography was replenished with the films Far Away, So Close, Tom and Viv, Clear and Present Danger, Basquiat, Victory, and The English Patient. The latter earned $232 million at the global box office and received nine Oscars. Willem himself, along with his colleagues, was nominated for the Screen Actors Guild Award as Best Cast. We disarm. We embrace them and see if we can relieve them of their weapons, you know, while we hide. I was a thief, so the army thought I'd be good at it. Notably, fans might not have seen the actor in this film as 20th Century Studios tried to kick him out of the project. However, the director insisted on casting Defoe. In 1997, the actor starred in the thriller Affliction and the action movie Speed 2 Cruise Control, for which he received a Golden Raspberry nomination. Then, Willem appeared in the romantic mystery Lulu on the Bridge, the erotic drama film New Rose Hotel, where he also co-produced, in the sci-fi horror film Existence, and the vigilante action thriller The Boondock Saints. The latter film received negative reviews from critics and was never released to theaters. However, seven years later, after its release on DVD, the profit amounted to $50 million, while the film itself acquired a cult status. You guys ready for this? This was no gangland assassination. Don't no creative. It was way too sloppy. Something went wrong here. This has personal written all over it. 
In 2000, Defoe starred in the films American Psycho and Animal Factory, in which he played a prisoner. In preparation for filming, the actor visited a prison and shaved his head. Willem also played actor Max Schreck in the horror film Shadow of the Vampire. This role was written specifically for him, and he pulled it off brilliantly. There was a time when I fed from golden chalices. For his work, Defoe was nominated for an Oscar, a Golden Globe, a Screen Actors Guild Award, and also received a Saturn Award. In 2001, the actor appeared in the films Pavilion of Women and Edges of the Lord. And in the following, he voiced a cartoon character in Globe Hunters and Around the World in 80 Days Adventure and starred in the films Autofocus, The Reckoning, and Spider-Man. In the latter, he played the main villain Green Goblin. Uh, Peter, may I introduce my father, Norman Osborn? I've heard so much about you. Great honor to meet you, sir. Harry tells me you're quite the science whiz. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. Willem wanted to star in this film so much that, without waiting for an invitation, he recorded a film audition and sent it to the director. Remarkably, at first, Defoe was not considered for the role, but when the producers saw his brilliant work in the movie Shadow of the Vampire, they agreed without hesitation. By the way, the actor insisted on filming without a double. He performed all the stunts himself, except for computer-generated ones, despite the fact that he had to wear an uncomfortable costume and a mask hiding his face. For his role, Willem was nominated for the MTV Movie Award as Best Villain. However, to this day, his portrayal of the antagonist is considered one of the best in the history of comic book movies. The actor himself considers this role to be his favorite, so much so that he even asked the director to return the Green Goblin in the next films of the franchise despite the death of the character. In 2003, Defoe starred in the action movie Once Upon a Time in Mexico and also voiced Gil in the cartoon Finding Nemo. By the way, the coloring and distinctive lines around the character's mouth mimic Willem's facial features. Then his filmography was replenished with the films The Clearing, Spider-Man 2, The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, Control, and The Aviator. In 2004, after 27 years of marriage, the media learned about Willem's separation from Elizabeth Lecomte. Former lovers have maintained a warm relationship, and Defoe withdrew from matters of their joint theater, leaving the reins in the hands of Elizabeth. In the same year, the man began dating Italian actress Giada Colagrande, 20 years younger than him. The couple's relationship developed rapidly, and less than a year later, the man proposed to the Italian woman in a very unusual way. During lunch, Defoe casually asked Giada, do you want to get married tomorrow? She agreed, and the very next day, March 25, 2005, the lovers legalized the relationship in the presence of two best friends as witnesses. Meanwhile, the actor starred in the straight-to-DVD film Bullfighter, the movie's Triple X State of the Union, Manderley, Ripley Underground, and Before It Had a Name, in which he co-starred with his new wife. She not only appeared on screen, but also acted as director and screenwriter of the project. Defoe also participated in writing the screenplay, however, the movie received negative reviews from critics. In 2006, Willem appeared in the films Paris, I Love You, American Dreams, and Inside Man. Funnily enough, the actor received an invitation to star in the latter in the men's room, where he ran into the director of the movie. Then, Willem's filmography was replenished with films The Walker, Mr. Bean's Holiday, Spider-Man 3, Go-Go Tales, Animorph, Fireflies in the Garden, Adam Resurrected, and The Dust of Time. In 2009, Defoe voiced a cartoon character in Fantastic Mr. Fox and also starred in the films Farewell, My Son, My Son, What Have Ye Done, Daybreakers, Cirque de Freak, The Vampire's Assistant, and Antichrist. To prepare for the role in the latter, he studied special literature and consulted with doctors and psychotherapists. As a result, the film received mixed reviews from critics. Many called it the most shocking film showed at the Cannes Film Festival. In 2010, the actor appeared in the dramas Miral and A Woman, and in the following year, he starred in the apocalyptic film 444, Last Day on Earth, and in the drama The Hunter. The filming of the latter took place in Australia, and there Willem had to deal with leeches. But as Defoe admitted to the media, he didn't lose a drop of blood, joking that it was because he had played vampires many times. Then he appeared in the films John Carter, Tomorrow You're Gone, Odd Thomas, Out of the Furnace, Nymphomaniac Vol. 2, A Most Wanted Man, Bad Country, The Fault in Our Stars, Pasolini, John Wick, and The Grand Budapest Hotel, for the role in which Willem, along with his colleagues, was nominated for the Screen Actors Guild Award as Best Cast. You need to find him right away for his own safety. 
and everybody else's. If he shows up, yes, sir. Tell him Jopling says. Besides, Defoe appeared in several short films and also voiced the evil teacher in the animated series The Simpsons and Gil in the cartoon Finding Dory. In 2016, the actor starred in the drama A Family Man, the monster action movie The Great Wall, and the thriller Dog Eat Dog. In the latter, Willem and Nicolas Cage played ex-convicts. Cage literally begged the actor to take part in the project and even gave him his entire fee of $100,000. By the way, in one of the interviews, when journalists asked him, would you be able to commit a crime with Nicholas in real life, Defoe replied that it was unlikely because he and Cage are big softies at heart. In 2017, the actor voiced a character in the horror film Death Note and also starred in the films What Happened to Monday, Murder on the Orient Express, and The Florida Project, in which he played a kind motel manager. To prepare for the role, Defoe spent three weeks in Sunshine State to get to know his character's life better and learn how to speak with the local accent. The film received good reviews from critics, and Willem was nominated for many film awards for his role, including a Golden Globe and an Oscar. Also, according to one of the publications, he was among the top three actors of the year. In 2018, the celebrity pleased fans with equally brilliant works, starring in the films Aquaman and At Eternity's Gate, in which he played Vincent Van Gogh. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Yes, my mind goes out of me, I'm telling you. It goes out of me. Notably, at the time of filming, the actor was 62 years old, while Van Gogh died at age 37. Defoe brilliantly performed the role and once again was nominated for a Golden Globe and Oscar, as well as receiving a number of prestigious awards at the Venice Film Festival. Then, Willem voiced the musical drama Box Lux and also starred in the films Tommaso, Motherless Brooklyn, Siberia, Togo, and The Lighthouse, in which he and Robert Pattinson played the lighthouse keepers. Hi, sir. You're too slow. You a dullard? No, sir. Fooled me. To prepare for the role, the actor learned to knit and also took dance lessons. He also studied the lingo of Atlantic fishermen and sailors of the late 19th century. This independent film was critically acclaimed and many publications included it in their list of the best films of the year. In 2020, Defoe appeared in the movies The Last Thing He Wanted and The French Dispatch, and the following year he starred in the films The Card Counter, Nightmare Alley, Zack Snyder's Justice League, and Spider-Man No Way Home, which became the most commercially successful film of the franchise, grossing almost $2 billion. Poor Peter. Too weak to send me home to die. No. I just want to kill you myself. Atta boy. <laughs> Willem agreed to return to the role of Green Goblin, provided that he would be allowed to perform as many stunts as possible in the frame. Defoe's colleagues were fascinated by his acting and admitted that during the filming, they were actually creeped out. For his role, the actor was nominated for the MTV Movie Award as Best Villain. In 2022, Defoe joined the cast of the series The Kingdom and also starred in the films The Northman and Dead for a Dollar. At the moment, the actor is still active in cinema. The drama Inside has already been released this year. Recently, the premiere of the sci-fi rom-com Asteroid City took place. Also coming out in the near future are Poor Things, Gonzo Girl, The Legend of Ochi, Finally Dawn Has Come, and Ant. The films Beetlejuice 2, Nosferatu, and Tropico are already being filmed, and the film The Man in My Basement is at the pre-production stage. Willem's net worth is estimated at $40 million, which he earned not only through film fees, but also by advertising contracts. Defoe starred in advertisements for Jim Beam Bourbon, Snickers Chocolate Bar, Mercedes Cars, clothing brands, Frame, Calvin Klein, and Palace, and others. The celebrity doesn't like to share the details of his personal life with journalists. It is known that he is happily married and never parts with his wife, living either in the US or in Italy. The couple travel a lot, by the way, Willem speaks Italian fluently and has a second citizenship. The couple has no children together. According to Giada, the secret of their strong marriage is a common passion for cinema. The actor meditates daily and does Ashtanga yoga. He also enjoys studying Indian philosophy. Willem is a pescatarian. He avoids eating meat of warm-blooded animals, believing that livestock farms are one of the main threats to the planet. That said, his favorite dish is the lake bass sandwich. Doing laundry is one of the actor's favorite activities. He loves going to laundromats and talking to strangers there. 
Defoe owned several real estate properties. In 2005, he bought an apartment in Manhattan for $606,000. The actor's son lived there for many years, but in 2016, the property was sold for $860,000. Also in 2005, Willem bought another apartment in New York in the West Village for $1.6 million. The property includes two bedrooms, a cozy living room, a kitchen, and a dining room. In 2014, a man sold the apartment for $2,870,000. After that, he and his wife purchased a 1,500-square-foot penthouse in the same area for almost $4 million. The couple also owns an apartment in Rome, from which in 2011, unknown culprits stole personal belongings of the artist worth $4,000. The information about the interiors of this home and the celebrity's car fleet is not available to the general public. To date, his filmography has more than 100 films of different genres. What role of Willem Dafoe impressed you the most? See you next week. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.